Good morning, sisters and brothers, and uh, welcome to our morning prayer. Today being Wednesday, the 21st of April. And I come to give thanks to God for giving us a new day. To ask for his help today in all that we do. To entrust our lives, our community, the lives of our, our family and our friends and frankly the world. To his mercy and care again today. And uh, so let us pray. Let us pray in faith. Let us pray in trust, knowing that our God is a great big God. Let's pray. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Hallelujah. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, Rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen and our collect. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Okay. Psalm, our psalm for this morning is uh, Psalm 105. Psalm 105. Psalm 105. Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him. Sing praise to him. 
tell of his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, has his miracles and the judgments he pronounced. You, his servants, the descendants of Abraham, his chosen ones, the children of Jacob. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever, the promise he made for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac. He confirmed it to Jacob as a decree, to Israel as an everlasting covenant. To you I will give the land of Canaan as the portion you will inherit. When they were but few in number, few indeed and strangers in it, they wandered from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another. He allowed no one to oppress them. For their sake he rebuked kings. Do not touch my anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. He called down famine on the land and destroyed all their supplies of food. And he sent a man before them, Joseph, sold as a slave. They bruised his feet with shackles and his neck was put in irons till what he foretold came to pass till the word of the Lord proved him true. The king sent and released him. The ruler of peoples set him free. He made him master of his household, ruler over all he possessed, to instruct his princes as he pleased and teach his elders wisdom. Then Israel entered Egypt. Jacob resided as a foreigner in the land of Ham. The Lord made his people very fruitful. He made them too numerous for their foes, whose hearts he turned to hate his people, to conspire against his servants. He sent Moses his servant and Aaron whom he had chosen. They performed his signs among them, his wonders in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made the land dark. For had they not rebelled against his words, he turned their waters into blood, causing their fish to die. Their land teemed with frogs, which went up into the bedrooms of their rulers. He spoke and there came swarms of flies and gnats throughout their country. He turned their rain into hail with lightning throughout their land. He struck down their vines and fig trees and shattered the trees of their country. He spoke and the locusts came, grasshoppers without number. They ate up every green thing in their land, ate up the produce of their soil. Then he struck down all the firstborn in their land the first, the first fruits of all their manhood. He brought out Israel laden with silver and gold, and from among their tribes no one faltered. Egypt was glad when they left because dread of Israel had fallen on them. He spread out a, a cloud as a covering and a fire to give light at night. They asked, and he brought them quail. He fed them well with the bread of heaven. He opened the rock, and the water gushed out like a river it flowed in the desert. For he remembered his holy promise given to his servant Abraham. He brought out his people with rejoicing, his chosen ones with shouts of joy. He gave them the lands of the nations. 
and they fell heir to what others had toiled for, that they might keep his precepts and observe his laws. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord indeed. All right, let's read one of the meditation from Keller's book. In fact, let's just read that one. Praise the Lord. As great as Israel's salvation was, it was temporary and incomplete. For Israel did not keep his laws and precepts. Something more was needed. In Jesus, we get a greater Joseph, who, taken captive and killed, was raised to the right hand of the throne to forgive and save those who betrayed him. We get a greater Moses who stands in the gap between the people and the Lord and who mediates a new covenant. We get the greater rock of Moses who receiving the rod of God's justice gives us the water of eternal life in a desert of a world. Behind everything God does, there is something unimaginably greater that we find in Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, I, th I thank you that your word reveals that behind everything you do, is something immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine. Let me live life confident in the knowledge of this, instead of with the vague sense of dread that we usually have regarding our circumstances around us. Give us grace to live in this confidence that you are doing immeasurably more than we can even ask or think. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, our New Testament reading is uh, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. From verse 1 to verse 10. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 As for you you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient all of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Amen. But Ephesians chapter 2 is a classic, uh, this, this bit here is a classic 
statement on our salvation. It is by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not from works, not by works, so that no one can boast. Our salvation, says Paul, is by grace. It is by grace through faith. Not anything we have done. We were not saved because of anything in us. You see, if, we, if our salvation was due to anything in us, then we would have something to boast about. But says Paul, it is purely um, grace and faith, which is a gift from God, which, by the way, is referring to faith. Faith is a gift from God. Grace is also a gift from God, of course. But in order to experience God's grace in our lives, we must exercise faith. But that faith is itself a gift from God. And so, sisters and brothers, there's nothing about our salvation that is, uh, that is attributed to us. There is nothing about our salvation that we can point to in ourselves and say, I am saved because of this. The only thing we can point to is I am saved because of the mercy of God. I am who I am because of God's grace in me. It's not by, it's not by my efforts. It's not by my wisdom. It's not by anything in me. And so Paul, I mean, he, 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 in fact, he starts the chapter with saying that we were dead in our transgressions and sins, which is another way of saying we, 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 we were lifeless spiritually. And therefore, because we were dead, we needed help to revive us. In fact, we needed life. So he says, but God, in verse 4, but because of his great love for us, God made us alive with Christ. You see, sisters and brothers, we were dead. We were spiritually dead without God in our lives. Anybody without God is spiritually dead. And someone who is dead cannot give life to themselves. And so we need life from outside us to come into us, to infuse us, to animate our dead spiritual lives so that we can have life. And so he said, we were dead in our trespasses and sins. We were following the, 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 the ways of this world. We were, we were um, listening to the, we were disobedient to God by being obedient to the ruler of the kingdom of the air. All of us, all of us, we lived to gratify the cravings of our sinful nature. And we followed the desires and thoughts of our sinful nature. All of us, those are the definition of spiritually dead people. We, 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 we listen to our own desires. We are disobedient to God. We gratify our own sinful nature uh, and so forth and so on. We lived in the ways of the world. But God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive in Jesus Christ. Sisters and brothers, if it wasn't for the fact that God, God, as it were, reached down, and saved us, God animating the spiritual deadness of our souls with his life, we would be lost eternally to hell. And there are many, there are many in our world, maybe in our families, in our community, who are dead in their trespasses and sins who are living according to the cravings of their desire, living according to the standards of this world, their sinful nature, and who needs the grace of God in their lives. And that's what we pray for. 
We pray that God will have mercy on this world, on the people in our community, that God will, will give them his grace and the gift of faith so that they will experience that grace. And that is our prayer. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ. Sisters and brothers, let us marvel at that grace. Let us rejoice because in Christ we are alive. We are no longer dead in our sins. We are now alive because of what God has done for us. But God in his mercy has made us alive in Christ Jesus. And so we give him thanks today for, for, for animating us and making us alive, giving us grace and faith to trust him and to be saved. Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray. Lord, we, we thank you. We thank you, O oh God, that when we were dead, you made us alive. When we were going astray, you brought us home. When we were drowning in the mire and the pit of our sins, you reached down and saved us. And so now we are alive in Christ by your grace and through faith. We are now saved, saved from our sins, saved from Satan, saved from death, saved from hell, saved from eternal death. Thank you, Lord, for your great grace, your amazing grace that you saw fit to save a wretch like me. And so I give you thanks. And so, Lord, if you never do anything else for me, I am eternally grateful for your salvation, for, the, for, for, for making, for animating my spirit, my soul, through the, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that making me alive, and so that I'll never die. So whatever else you do for me in this world is, is a mere icing on the cake, as it were. Because you have rescued me from hell. You have saved me from my own sinful nature. You have breathed life into my soul. And so, God, I thank you this morning. And so, Lord, help me to rejoice in this amazing grace today. Let's help me to sing of this amazing grace, this mercy that you've had on this sinner, this sinner who deserved nothing but hell, who deserved nothing but eternal death. You have, you have rescued me from the, the pit of hell, from the pangs of death. And you have brought me into the kingdom of your son. Thank you, Lord. We pray for those who, have, who are still dead in their trespasses and sins. People in our own community, those we know, people in our family, Muslims, Hindus, and so many people who follow false religion in our world. We pray for them. They are still in their sins. They are still in, in the dead. They are still dead. And so, Lord, make them alive, we pray, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Infuse your grace into their hearts. Give them the gift of faith so that they will receive your grace. Receive your mercy. Lord, we pray for those who are, who are indeed lost in this world this morning. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. And this morning we continue to pray for those who are sick. I do want to remember Doreen this morning and Doreen's asked us to pray for a number of things. As so a Lord, I pray for Doreen today. Remember her today in your mercy, even as she gets her vaccine today. Lord, uh, protect her from any undue uh, side effects from this vaccine. And Lord, keep her safe, we pray. Lord, give her the faith to trust you, uh, even in weakness. We pray for her mom in America who fell. Oh God, we pray that you will be there with her. And oh Lord, we ask that you will strengthen her body. It is so hard when at, at, at this age to, to have broken bones. It's, we know, Lord, that physically setting those bones will be very difficult. And so, Lord, we pray that you will intervene and uh, bring help, bring healing, bring wholeness to Doreen's mom this morning. Uh, Lord, we ask for you to bring strength to her weak body. And Lord, we pray that you'll be, the, be with her in the very difficult place that she's in right now. With whoever is around her, whichever family member is around her, to, to support her and to encourage her and to, and to remind her of your mercy and grace. As the Lord be with her today, we pray. And Doreen, and, and Lord, hear the prayer of their hearts this morning. And just, uh, and just continue to lavish your mercy and grace upon Doreen and her family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for John in hospital and we ask for God's mercy, for God's grace upon him this morning. We pray that God will raise him up and bring him home to his wife and family. We pray for Sebastian. We pray for continual healing in his life, that he will get stronger and stronger each day. We pray, oh God, for those others that are on our hearts today and all those that are on our prayer list. Lord, hear our prayer for these, your children. Watch over them today and keep them safe from all that's evil. Protect those, oh God, protect them from evil, protect them from pain and suffering. And Lord, we pray that whatever happens to all of us today, that we will draw nearer to you as you draw near to us. That Lord, even in suffering, even in pain, we will we will be closer to you more than we have ever been. And so, Lord, we pray that today you will draw your people into a deeper, more meaningful relationship with you today. All of us, Lord, as we meditate on this day, as we travel through this day, as we journey through this day, another day, help us to make the best use of this day, to sing your praises, to meditate on your amazing grace and to recognize, Lord, that you are with us always. And no matter what we go through today, you'll never leave us nor forsake us. And you're always with us, even in the darkest valley. And so, Lord, hear us, we pray today. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. And so our Patrick's prayer. Christ be with me, Christ within me. Christ behind me, Christ before me. Christ beside me, Christ to win me. Christ to comfort and restore me. Christ beneath me, Christ above me. Christ in quiet, Christ in danger. Christ in hearts of all that love me. Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us, 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. bless you and keep you may the lord protect you may the lord watch over your going and coming today sisters and brothers may the lord be with you in all that you do in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit amen have a blessed day one and all